All right guys, welcome back to the channel. I actually fast forwarded a little bit here from where I started. I'm at about 70% of the way done with the doors now. So I've got my system down pat. I kind of had to just get after it and get some done before I started taking video. But now I've got a pretty good system down. So I'll show you what I'm doing to set these new doors and these old openings. These are the new door slabs that I have to install. Now they were ordered without any bevel. They're just strictly a slab with square edges. And doors are usually beveled with a two degree bevel on both sides of the door. Helps them close better and helps ensure that they don't hit on the strike side and so that the hinge doesn't bind in the jam in case the jam gets twisted a little bit. So the first thing I have to do is match the size of these new door slabs to the old slabs. Now, most of these old door slabs are an eighth inch undersized. That means I simply have to rip about a 16th off of both sides. To do that, I'm just using a track saw. There are different planers and things that you could use to do that, but honestly, a track saw is just pretty easy and most of us already have access to a track saw anyways. Now this house is a really nice estate. It's on a bunch of acreages. It's a very nice home, but I'd say it was built 20, 25 years ago. And I think the door slabs have actually maybe already even been changed once. I'm not sure on that, but if they weren't, whoever set these doors in the first place did not do a very good job. So the issue I'm having is on some of these doors, I do have very, very large margins already on the strike side. So on some of them, I actually am taking note of it whenever I look at the opening and I'm adding a little bit to the door just to make the margins look better whenever I install the new doors. That way we don't end up with a quarter inch margin on the strike side. Now, since I know I'm gonna be taking an eighth inch off the door, I wanna keep things even. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a 16th inch off both sides. So I'm gonna mark 27 and 15 sixteenths and 27 and 15 sixteenths. I wish I would have replaced my splinter guard before I started this job. It's been chewed through a little bit too much, so I'm actually having to keep it bumped over a little bit to actually get the correct cut line. I have my track saw set at about two degrees for the bevel, and that seems to be working pretty out pretty well and matching the existing door bevel also. After the bevel on one side is ripped, I'm gonna take my track saw, set it aside for a second, and then I'm gonna pull my measurement again from the other side, and now I'm gonna mark 27 and 7 eighths. Keep in mind when you're pulling your measurements, make sure you're always pulling your measurements from the widest side of the door. Not Keep in mind that the, the inside of the door is going to be narrower because the bevel goes in two degrees. So the way I have this workflow in my head, I'm always working from the widest side of the door face up because I start by making my track saw rip from the top side. I like to put the hose around my arm. That way it doesn't snag on anything back here. The blade I'm using is an Ashland blade. They're for sale on Amazon. They're pretty generic blade. To me, they're a throwaway blade, but I use them quite a bit with the track saw because often I end up cutting MDF and things like that that just dull the blade really quick. With this kind of blade, I don't have to worry about hitting nails, but this one's decently sharp and it's got a pretty fair number of teeth. So I'm just gonna lightly hit the edge with a sander and that makes it nice and smooth. You do wanna make sure you hit the edge with a sander or a plane. That way you remove any potential saw marks. I find the sander is the easiest method here. Now literally as soon as I'm done hanging all these doors, the painters are gonna sh show up, take them off of the hinges, take them somewhere, spray them and bring them back and put them in. So I wanna make sure these doors are prepped and ready to go for the painters. 
don't want to leave a perfectly sharp edge on these. So I'm going to take some 120 grit sandpaper and just lightly hit these corners so that they're not so sharp. The next step is maybe the most crucial, well, it probably is the most crucial step, and that is matching the new door to the old door. So what I do with every single door is match the hinges and the bore location for the lock set on each individual door. I didn't decide to make a pattern for the hinges or anything and just go full on production. Um, I feel like it's a lot safer just to mark each door. That way, if there's any variation, I don't screw myself inadvertently. To start with, I'm gonna take my combination square and I wanna start by lining up the very top of the door for height wise. So I'm taking my combination square, making sure that's flush on top. Then I'm gonna come over here to the, the hinge side and I'm gonna line that up on the side also. This actually doesn't have to be perfect. The more crucial uh, position is the up and down position because obviously that's gonna determine where your hinges are set and whether the door has the correct margin on top or not. After everything is basically lined up, we just need to trace and mark the same locations on the new door. So here I'm marking the top and bottom of the mortise for the latch. And I'll go ahead and just do a circle around the center here uh, to mark where that bore is gonna be. That's actually not that crucial because I have a jig set up for that but then I wanna come over to this side and do the hinges. You just wanna be careful as you're doing this to make sure you're being as accurate as possible with your pencil line. You could also use a marking knife or a utility knife, but I don't wanna inadvertently put a gouge in the door somewhere that isn't gonna get routed out. So I'm just going with a pencil to keep the finished product looking a little bit cleaner. At this time, you also want to take a look at the bottom of your door and you really should have looked at this also whenever you were taking the door out of its existing opening and see if you needed to cut any off of the bottom. Most of these, of these doors I've been working with have all been left at the full height of 80 inches. So I haven't had to cut too many off for length, but that is something you want to keep an eye on and do right now if you need to do that. Over there, I do have my other track saw, my cordless track saw set up at zero degrees in case I need to cut off the bottoms of any of these doors. That way I'm not having to switch back and forth from two degrees to zero degrees and keep track of that in my head. Okay, so everything is marked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the old door and add it to the pile over here. These are solid oak doors, so they're pretty heavy. And the first thing that I've been doing is the hinges and then I'll stand the door up vertically and bore the lock set. So now comes the difficult question of how to mortise these hinges the most accurately and most quickly. Uh, and for this type of job, I think the answer is not to go after the most quickly solution. Uh, again, these are special order doors. It took six weeks to get them. I don't wanna screw any of them up and I want them to go in easily. Now I could make set up my jig so that I have all three of these templates set up and connected together. And I actually started out that way, but I wasn't getting accurate results. Um, there are actually holes in these templates on the bars and my, my set screw was wanting to find those holes instead of being exactly where I wanted it to be. So that wasn't working really well. I ended up opting just to use one template at a time. Maybe that cost me a couple extra minutes per door, but that's no big deal because I'm getting perfect accuracy. And then whenever I put the one side of the hinge back on this, go to put the door in the opening and go to drop that hinge pin in to get everything lined up. They've been lining up really easily. If you've ever went to put doors back on and the hinge cylinders don't line up, it's a royal pain. So. Doing one at a time has been working pretty well for me. The issue we have here is these hinges on this house are a 5 8 inch radius. To achieve a 5 8 inch radius with the router bit, that means you have to have double 
the size of the radius. So an inch and a quarter mortising bit and an inch and three eighths bushing on your router. So this template, template, however you like to say it, is gonna be one eighth inch larger than your hinge. This is three and a half, this is three and five eighths. So whenever you go to line this up with your lines, it's actually kind of tricky to line that up. So what I did is made a jig in the bottom. There's these two pieces of wood. The bottom is three and a half. The top is three and five eighths. So I can drop this piece of wood into place. And since the bottom is three and a half inches, I can line that up perfectly with my pencil lines and I can tap my nails in and that'll be exactly where I need it and it's ready to route. Let me move down here to hinge mortise number two, use my little jig to get things lined up precisely. You wanna be gentle with these nails. They're kind of fragile. The other crucial thing here is I'm not gonna turn on my router until I know I've got it in position and the blade is not touching anything. I don't want to damage my, my cutter, my router bit. I don't wanna damage my template and I don't want it to start up against my door where it's gonna chew up my door whenever it starts up. I also wanna make sure I turn off the router and let it quit spinning before I pull it off. Unless I'm feeling risky, I might try to go straight up. But for a YouTube video, I'm gonna say, just turn it off and let it stop spinning until you take it off. Just as a side note, I had planned on doing all of these mortises with the new DeWalt cordless routers. And the beautiful thing about these routers is you start them up and they stop almost instantly, which is awesome. The problem was I did not have a base plate that I could adapt a one and three eighth inch guide bushing to. And in years past, whenever I've done this, I already had this special Bosch base plate set up um, for the router. So I ended up just obviously going with the Bosch router with a cord for this. So I'm stuck uh, waiting for it to spin down, but that's okay. Numero tres, numero tres. I actually lived in Mexico for two years and I can't say tres anymore. If you're careful, you can pull it off before it stops spinning down. You just have to make sure you're pulling it straight up. Now I got my drill. I got two words for you, VIX bits. VIX self-centering bits are by far the best I've ever used. They actually work. So I pulled half of a, uh, I pulled a hinge leaf off and I'm using that as my template to pre-drill all the holes. That way that's done and it's not being done in the house. And I can just take these doors inside, fasten the hinge leaf back on these and hang them in place. Before we move on to boring the lock set, I wanna take a second and talk about hinge placement a little bit more. We, we obviously talked about getting the height of the hinge placement correct, but the depth of the hinge mortise is also gonna be crucial. Now, if you're doing new doors, it's really easy to use a jig like this and just match the preset settings that you have on the jig. The problem is I'm matching these old slabs, these new slabs to an old opening. And the first uh, door that I hung, I quickly realized that the stock position that this jig offsets for inch and three eighths doors was not gonna work. The problem was I got my door all but closed about three or four inches of the way and it was pinching on the door stops. And what that means is the, the, the mortise is not in the correct position this way. 
I'm gonna try and show you this real quick. Hopefully the camera focuses. But the way this Bosch jig comes, it's got a special, it comes with its own little screw here and it makes it so this piece will not move. So you're locked in right there. Uh, unfortunately, that was not enough offset. And if I move the screw down, that goes all the way to an inch and three quarter door, which is way too much. So I ended up grabbing a cabinet screw from my van, threaded that in. And what that does, it actually gives me a little bit of slop. So I bump it up against the door and it gives me that 16th of an inch that I need. So that's been working great. I wanna take a second just to talk about these saw bucks real quick. This is something I just whipped up in the shop. It takes you maybe 45 minutes to build, not a big deal. But a key component here is they're obviously built up three quarters of an inch because of these supports on the side here. Those are screwed to the bottom. This, so done with the hinge mortises, ready to stand it up and bore the lock set. Just a matter of picking it up here. And then I can also use these saw bucks in the vertical position for my lock set boring jig. Weight is off of it. It actually tapers up a little bit. So I can drop the door down. The weight of the door flexes that half inch plywood down and then it locks the door in place so it's not gonna wiggle around. Whenever I wanna lift it out, it takes the weight off, unlocks it, and then you can um, just really easily drop it in and take it out, no problem. I didn't have any carpet laying around to apply to the inside of this plywood. Not a big deal because these doors aren't painted yet, uh, but I did ease all the edges and stuff so it's not gonna scratch anything. So these work great for you know, dropping a door. You can very easily find the opening and then drop the door in place and it doesn't, doesn't move around too bad at all. And then whenever I'm done with the hinge mortises, I can stand this up. 